Uh, nah, because I heard someone say, I might cheat with you in your relationship, but I'll never cheat with you in my relationship. What sign is that? <laughs> Yours. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode. It's your boy Sergio's Talks. It's your boy Matt. It's your boy Carl. And uh, we're still at the studio de Remarque. Big, big shout out to them. So... You're still eating? You still it's, it's stuck in the back. I do the same thing as you. I store, you know, in the back. No one does no, what he no. does. Yeah. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Five stars on Amazon and Apple Podcasts and Spotify and the most recent add-on, Patreon. Shout out to Patreon. So if you guys want exclusive episodes, we have three different tiers. You guys can go check out all that information. If you want to see Carl Naked, you'll see him there also. Definitely. If you guys want to get an extra episode on Fridays, you guys could also get access to that. If you want early access to the Wednesday episodes, you can get access to that. So all the information available on Patreon forward slash Sergio Talks podcast. Yeah. One is actually crazy just to get a reaction out of you. And the other one is like, yeah, yeah. we'll talk about it. So first one, it says, my my Uber asked me, was I eat? Wait, let me start over. First of all, please. Guys, we're going to English. We're gonna do Twitter I, I, confessions I, I, of things that I've read this week. Have like, I actually realized that? Right. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Twitter confession of some tweets I've read this week. So this is the first one. It's actually crazy. My Uber asked. Oh, asked. <laughs> <laughs> My Uber okay, I say, no, wait, was, wait, wait. I realized that. When you read, bro. I, I'm stupid, huh? It goes crazy. Yeah, I know. Sometimes I know. I'm, I'm, I'm watching, I'm like, I'm like, wait, what? But I do the but, same but you shit. Know, but you know, sometimes I'm like that. Sometimes I read, my eyes go faster yeah. than the words that I'm saying. Yeah. You good, bro. Just read it word by Just word, Just take bro. your time. My Uber asked, oh, was I eating <laughs> seafood earlier? I said yes, but it was definitely my pussy. Oh. <gasps> Wait, what? One more time for Carl. My Uber asked, was I eating seafood earlier? I said yes, but it was definitely my pussy. Hey, yo. Can we talk about that one night when we went to the club on Halloween? <laughs> that was oh, different. So listen, listen, I've been in a relationship for a long time, right? And obviously after we spoke about it, you guys know what I'm talking about too. So obviously I've smelt what you know, an Coach infection yourself. smells like or yeah. like a yeast infection smells mm. like. And it was, quote unquote, exactly that smell, but in a hot, sweaty club. Well, I don't remember. And uh, she was twerking and she was like sending wind our way. Wait, you have to, wait, wait. It's the fact that she was not moving at first and then we're like, okay, whatever. Oh. And then starts to twerk. And soon. And I, think I didn't it's realize you. at first. Who? I didn't realize Me at first. Me or you. I, I smelled it, it right away. Guys. Yeah, and then we're like, Yo, and then we kind of look around at where the fuck that shit comes from, and then there's just her, slap, slap, and it does. Uh, and then he comes in the frame, and and we're like, because there's noise right in the yeah. club. Yo, God, I was so confused, and I was like, Yo, <laughs> that was yeah, bad. bad. And was then happening. that same girl was dancing on another girl, and you just saw like the girl afterwards. She ended up smelling mm -hmm. with the smell. I think she looked down at her at her jeans because obviously it had rubbed off. Mm. Yeah, that was that was I mean look, listen, not not to shame the girl. Like these things there are things that are normal, but like in a in a in a club setting, like when it's it's like it's hot, it's musky. That's oh. deep. That's deep. <laughs> Fuck no, but no shame stills. Yeah, like like you yeah, said, but like Bro, like you don't you obviously you can probably smell it before you go. Like if I'm smelly, I I smell it from like if I, I don't know if it's, nah. your, if, it, if it's your own body odor. I think you're used to it. You know, you're like used, used to, to your, your smell. Yeah, but it's yeah. a yeast infection. No, you, sometimes you could you could smell bad, but you don't know. Let's say, you know, yeah. when your mom just cooked at home and you smell like food mm -hmm. and you go out, you smell like food, but you don't smell yourself. But people mm -hmm. around you are like, yeah. mm, well, coming out of the damn, you smell, smell like fried. chicken. Yeah. Not because I'm black. But like, because you just smell like chicken. You know what I'm saying? That was so smooth. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. was, was oh, do you know one? how to swim? I do, actually. Yeah, same. Uh, my half other side helped me to... The, the, the white side. Yes. Yeah. So, no. so, do you know how to swim? I got... I you know how to float. Oh, yeah. 
I don't know. We went, we went swimming. We went snorkeling. Yeah. Snorkeling? Snorkeling. Uh, Tulum. Yeah. Yes, I know how to swim. Did you just remember? No, I just wanted to you're be actually really 100% happy. black, you're so actually... I was going to say no. But I'm like, no, I know how to swim, actually. So. But, you, but you're actually, like, you're, you're a happy swimmer. Yeah. yeah I'm like, you know, like a little water. fish? Like a little yeah. fish. Carl, Carl, when we went to Tulum, was in a mood. And then, like, in a mood. I don't know if, you, like, you were hungry. hungry. Probably. Probably hungry. Carl was hungry, so he was in a mood. And the minute that we went in to prepare for snorkeling, the minute his feet touched the water, he became like My Little Mermaid. Mm-hmm. And, and he was, and he was like, "Look, look, Serge, look, look, the stingrays." I'm like, "Carl, I know. There's like a million of them." <laughs> Yo, <laughs> this bitch was like, so come huge. out of the water with his goggles, like all squished here. <laughs> Yo, that shit was so huge, bro. It was, it was the, the little the, stingrays, bro. The, the, and, the, and the turtles, <gasps> the turtles. And it was Dora. Tina. It was Dora. Tina. <laughs> Tina. Dora. Little Dora, the bluefish. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, uh, it was Doris. 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 Oh, yeah. what the. But then, but then also, um, I, the one thing that I loved, right, is that we, we us three, we took off, right, mm-hmm. and then we were three other girls, and those girls were like, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to swim. There was anxiety and whatever, right, mm-hmm. and we kind of like we were in the water. We looked back at them. We saw they were panicking. And we're just like, but the turtles. <laughs> <laughs> we actually just we went just, back. We just we just left them. Oh, like, you guys good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll see you later. Oh, uh, uh, anyways, okay, we're going to the next one. Uh, which you guys need to okay first of all you guys need to answer in the f- first Few one second okay. well, first one second you need to answer just so usually people just... just say first second and not first one second but okay Light it in, huh? be nice so this is another twitter confession uh nah because i heard someone say i might cheat with you in your relationship but i'll never cheat with you in my relationship what sign is that <laughs> Yours. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I panicked. Oh my Are god! You told, you told Is that me Sagittarius? No, you're Sagittarius. You're Sagittarius. Okay, so, you're, no, because I know. Anyways, Aries. Aries. Is it Gemini? What? No. Oh, Gemini. M- my my answer would be Leo. Gemini. Aries. What is it? What is it? What? What's the answer? The sign. Oh, there's no answer. It's it's literally just a the, 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 there's no answer. It's what sign is that? Oh. You, you're gonna leave me on a cliffhanger. All right, so let it, you, y'all let us know what the sign was. It has to be Gemini. Well, let, let me just reread the question. Nah, That's crazy, though. Wait, wait, nah, because I heard someone say I might cheat with you in your relationship, but I'll never cheat with you in my relationship. What sign is that? Respectfully. Damn. You know, what's the what's the most toxic uh, astrology? Gemini. You see it? Gemini. Gemini for real? Oh, by oh. far. I love Gemini. Oh, 100%. Though. You love Geminis? Yeah. I have a soft spot for them. What the fuck? I'm going to be honest. I only know what I am. And that's all I know about astrology. Mm. What are you again? Aries. Ugh. Okay. He's he's, he's, Ari- like he's Aries, but like depending on the day, he's also like like toxic. Yeah. Like that. that's the other astrology sign. Yeah. What does that you mean? should have like, your isn't, own sign. Isn't your like ascendant like toxic? Like your Aries ascendant toxic? Scorpio. Toxic. Yeah, Scorpio is actually. Second. Are you okay? No, it's like, you, you want to know something? And uh, if you go on Google and you write the most toxic one, you know which one is it? Michu. Which is? Virgo. Really? Yes. Keep... I just know it's not. Yeah, I, I got to I gotta double check that. Okay, you're doing toxic? I, toxic. Okay, you toxic. do toxic, you do happiest, and I'm going to do uh, like the most sexual. The, oh. Okay, we'll see. Okay, so hold on. We'll start. You found you found yours. The most toxic is Gemini, first place. Second place, Cancer, and third place, Scorpio. Okay, so the the most the more the most toxic one for women is Gemini. Exactly. And then, Cancer. Cancer. Cancer and then, and then Scorpio. And Scorpio. Yeah. So we'll do a top three. So if we go happiest, it's no woman or woman. It's actually just happiest signs. It's actually Aries. Aries, mm. yeah. Second is Leo, and third one is Libra. Would you look at that? What the fuck? And the most and the most sexual signs for women are Scorpios, to be. Aries, and Tauruses. Women, <laughs> not a woman. You're about to shout out. Yourself. I was about to shout out myself. <laughs> it's that it says I'm we're a Sagittarius are the most toxic now. Yeah, it depends <laughs> on like which one you go. But if you go like. Always like the first uh, like article, whatever, or most article. Oh, most of them always the say Gemini. One. 
second. Yeah. Oh, okay, no, it, 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 was, it was generic. So Taurus is third. So it's generic, it's not woman. Okay, yeah. yeah. And Ari's second, shout out. Damn, that's crazy. Who do you think likes sex more, me or you? Between me and you? Yeah. You. What the fuck? So the statistic is wrong. Oh, because, oh, okay, I get it. Because I'm second and you're third? Yeah. yeah. But between me and you, you would be first. A hundred percent. You're not one to talk either, bro. I don't even know who likes him between more me and you. It's not it's still it's, you. It's still you. It's fucking you. It's a thousand percent you. You know, for the longest time, I thought it was a problem, though. It He's is. He's like, like in my previous rela- in my previous relationship, I thought I ended up having the problem. What? Why do you say? Why you say you talked? You. Because it's, it's not a problem now. Mm-hmm. It's not a problem because. You found another person with the that exact has the same, same problem. problem. <laughs> <laughs> that, bro. Like what? Uh, shit. What was it? Nephoman? This is the, this the Nymph- thing. Nympho. 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 Nymphomaniac. Him and his girl. Mm. Nah. Nymphomaniac is like it's an addiction. We could go, we could go without having sex. No. Yes. For like no. You you know when we chill with them and they mean? somewhat disappear for. 15 minutes. She had to tell me a secret. Yeah. I'm not stupid. She had to whisper Uh, a secret. Whisper the secret into my pants. (laughs) (laughs) And you know what's funny? I can, I I never told you that, but I always like kind of see when it's going to happen at some point. They talk, whatever, they're vibing, whatever. And at some point, I can see from far, they're like a little closer to them. And I see a little whatever and then two seconds later they're they're leaving and they're going up i just know it's happening <clears throat> and then reappear after 15 25 Happy minutes Doop. but the reason for that is because we're, we're both like very like uh like uh mentally stimulated people so like what we tend to do like especially when we go on dates like we sit across from each other and we don't give each other like any like physical touch, like like touch or attention, right? So we're just talking, and because we've created that di- like that physical distance between one another, by the end of the night, we're like, okay, like, like can can we touch each other now? You know, we are, definitely. So like even like like months into the relationship, like we keep doing that just to keep like the chase, yeah, yeah to keep the chase going. And it I don't know, is we stimulate ourselves in, in that way. And when we're in, in settings like that, we're not all like PDA either. What so is the, PDA? Uh, like public, um, mm. public yeah. affection, PA. Yes. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> so like we try to keep that like low key, right? But then after that, like after a while, it's like it's like you know, okay, like I miss you, like mm. you know, come and then we just kind of come and then literally come. come, yeah, come and then come, come and then come. Damn. So today's topic was not to be talking about relationships; it was to be talking about the actual the opposite, and it was to talk about breakups. Mm. Oh. Yeah. How do you well break up breakups and like love as a whole? So I guess it's still I guess it still counts. How do you handle your breakups? Like, what kind of person you are for breakups? Let's say like like would you by text call in real life, and are you the type to like, uh, one like you tell them I break up and then you ghost, or you need like some closure? It takes time for you to like you're gonna talk to the person for multiple weeks until it's actually done. Have you ever broken up with someone? Yeah, I did. Really? Yeah. Oh wait, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, okay. But mm-hmm. like besides that, the before. Yeah, yeah. Really? But it's usually always like I I hate face to face stuff because mm-hmm. uh when as soon as a girl starts crying, I'm like, yeah, and then I'm like shit. I don't know what to do. You know what I'm saying? So I just, I'm just there like oh, and then I'm like hey, hey, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's always hard face to face. So I, I feel that I did end like on on the phone a couple of times. But you're also very uh, empathetic. Him, so, yeah. yeah. So like, as soon it's, as like the girl starts crying, you're like, you want it, like it's it's yeah. uh, come on, it's, it's, so, like, it's, yeah, it's, it's stronger than, than you. It's stronger than you to just be sweet with the person. Yeah, which is a quality, but at the same time, it can be like when you need time to be firm. Like it's hard. I can't be firm. Yeah, yeah. I I was though, and the last time I was really firm. You were. Yeah, I yeah. went and I was like, okay, you know what? Blah 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. But then, to be fair, like, like the reasons for your breakup, like, made sense, you know? Like, yeah. you had a reason to break up. And, like, even if... Like, I don't every, I don't really think... I think there was more pros than cons for you to break up. Yeah, also. You know, like, you were gaining more for yourself by breaking up than exactly. staying in a relationship. But I, that, that, that brings up a good point. I, I, I think there's nothing that hurts more than a relationship that ends well. 
you know oh, when you're when you're both having the talk and you you guys are like both crying and you know it's like it's not what we want but we know it's what like what needs That's, to happen yeah yeah and it's like you know she's crying so you're thinking to yourself like okay well obviously she doesn't want to break up and she loves me mm. so like obviously this can be fixed if we really want it to but like it's gotten Literally. to a point of no return now where like it just has to end but like you guys still have like that much affinity for one mm. another yeah and then you gotta leave and then you're like yeah, it's like do we do we like hug, do we hug for one last time? Do we kiss for one last do we, time? Do we yeah, kiss we for one last time? Do we fuck for one last time? <laughs> My heart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, for shit. me, I'm, I'm 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 like you. I I'll do it mostly over the phone. I don't like necessarily in real life. I did That's it though. Crazy. I did it. I did it. I I did the three of it. I did by text, by phone, and in real life. Yeah. So like, uh, but as I as I grow older, obviously I did more like face. Yeah, you right, get like, more like mature MSN. and stuff. Yeah, like MSN. Back face. then, yeah, MSN. Like just a quick email, like just letting you know. <laughs> His email read like, um, "Sorry to inform you, yeah. but, Best your regards. Po- <laughs> but your position has been revoked." <laughs> regards. <Thumbs up. laughs> With a little blue thumbs up. Oh, shit. Uh, but yeah, um, for me, breakups are hard, man. Like, uh, I I'm the same as you when it comes to breakup like i have a hard time being so firm like i'm done yeah like i can't like as soon as like the person's gonna start crying or whatever i'm gonna have that feeling that like okay like it be resolved whatever the problem yeah, let's we have. try yeah. we let's could try. try another time and it, the problem with me and and most of my like relationship i had was always the same thing it was like like okay we break up but then now we continue to see each other and then we try to work it out but it goes to a point until it's toxic. At first, it was actually a healthy breakup until it got to being so toxic that one of or the other is actually hurt. Right. Mm. Which I think is it's bad. Like, I've never wanted that. I think it is bad. Yeah. But like, it's it's like when it's a he- it's healthy, both of us are like, well, we're in a good mood. Like, it's, it's healthy, not in a good mood, but it's healthy so we can work things out. But when it's super toxic, usually people have, it's more easier to ghost or to just disappear or to like, okay, fuck off. Like, I'm not going to talk to you yeah. anymore. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty bad at this when it comes to that because I'm, I'm pathetic like you, like, or whatever. Like, I, I'll keep talking to girls. She's crying, bro. I'm bad at this. I'm horrible. But ghosting is so easy. Ghosting, yeah. Ghosting is so easy. Go- ghosting is a, is, a, is a hit and run. Yeah. You know when you open your car door by accident, you hit the car next to you, and you just do nothing. You just like go away. Mm. You know? But I've I've never done that, so I don't know. Yeah, same. But I I'm completely the opposite as you though. I can't ghost. I literally can't. Wow. I but can't. to be honest, in my defense, I try not to ghost, but I actually forget to answer. Uh, valid. You know, I know you guys forget to answer. Don't lie. Right. You know when you get the message, we all get the message. Right. But. We see it and everything, but we don't answer yet because you can't answer right away. Mm. And then you forget. Mm. And then you see like 10 hours and then you see <laughs> pending. <laughs> and you're like, okay, let me not enter at this point. It's yeah. Been three days. To be honest, I'd rather you not answer if it's been 10 hours than you answering after 10 hours. I don't know if you get what I mean. No, yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah like the, me, me, I'm the type, I'm go, I don't know if you guys are like this, but I unsend my messages. And I don't care what girl says anything to the to, to us that well to me that says oh you're insecure you don't assume you're you're blah 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 no you just didn't answer me you saw my text and you didn't answer it so why would I keep it there <laughs> just to hang what does it matter to you why oh my god oh my god this happens to me so much I sent a message no answer for fucking a day or whatever I answer my answered my message a minute later why you answer your messages huh yeah. So why didn't you just answer? Why, that always answered it because you didn't answer. And now I know that you've seen it and you purposely did not answer. So you send it and you send, unsend it right away. You didn't answer. Beep, beep. Yeah. So like, what is, is that a game? Like, is it like, I don't get it. Like of, uh, of like, mm, I'm not answering for Still, everyone. Days. Everyone does that though. So you can't, you can't blame them. But after a day, shit, that's harsh. But the thing is me, I a hundred percent don't do that. I answer everyone that's actually texting me. If I don't answer you, you'll know that I don't like you and you'll yeah. never text me again. Fair enough. Yeah. I'm just really bad at answering, period. Yeah, I know. Let's see Let's see what the count is at right now. The count is at 219. And me? Hey. 
is at seven. One fifty four. That is crazy. I, and, and, Mine and, is at seven. Seven. And the only reason, the only reason it's at seven. You're not talking to your mic. No. The only reason it's at seven is because I didn't answer people that texted me in the last hour of podcast. That's it. Otherwise, it would be at zero. Damn. I'm happy for I you. Actually, I actually answered mine. Otherwise, it would be like that. See? See, no, nah, I can't. I just like the not answer. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Uh, but I'm I'm not like call me instead though. Because mm. call me is gonna is gonna like give some pressure on me like okay it's actually important. Yeah. And like I should but, call you back. Uh, wait wait. <laughs> Be careful what he says because if you call him but you call him for something that's completely useless he's gonna let you know. He's gonna be like did you actually call me for that? But the thing is if you text him that and it's not important he's not gonna answer you. But right. if you call him and tell him like. Yo, like, have you whatever? And then you're like, did you actually call me for that? Yeah. You couldn't text it? Yeah. Mm. So then in either case, it's like, did you die though? No. So in so either don't case, bother I should me. just not, not bother text me. you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But then. Leave me alone. <laughs> but, but then, but then, it, but, but then she'll text you and be like, yo, are you okay? Are you alive? Or is everything okay? I've never texted that ever. Carl. I'm thinking. Thank you. No, no, no. Don't. Bad reference. I've known you now for two years, three years now. You've done that, fam. If I, if I didn't text you, Broskis, one day I didn't text you for a week just to know. And you're like, yo, you good? Yeah, because I know that's your love language. <laughs> <laughs> did you see what you just did? <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, had, I, had these, I had these moments where like, you know, I actually didn't talk to like such and such a person in a while. I mean, just like text them to see like if they're okay. <laughs> And then you'll text him and he's not going to answer you for and then, you t- and then if you tell me if you're okay, then I won't talk to you for another two weeks after that. Because <laughs> you're okay. Exactly. So like, I just need to check in. Yeah. Anyways. So break we are, up. We are not in a relationship, okay? To come back on the topic. You guys should break up. Are come we, back on the topic. Are we having our first beef? No. No. <clears throat> we are in a fucking Ew. relationship. We're not, Matt. That is news to me. We were in a relationship, a three-way. Pause. Pause. <laughs> no Pause. Um, <laughs> your wait. What topic? How do you handle breakups? It was your turn to answer. Um, I well, I like I can't do the thing that you mentioned. Like for me, like after we break up, I can't still mm. continue to talk to someone even if it ends on a good note, because like I could only speak to you afterwards after I've healed, after I've moved on, mm. and if I still feel like I want to have you a part of my life, then we could like reconnect and maybe be on good terms. But fresh after a breakup, yeah, there's no way it's it's it, it'll always turn out to be something toxic, mm. you know. So if you want to revisit something afterwards and, and like later on, sure. But how I handle a breakup, it's you go your way, I go my way. I try to kind of like speed past the breakup as quick as possible. Like I don't want to be the guy that's like, oh, by the way, like, you know. I forgot this at your place. I need to come pick it up. Or now, you know, I also forgot this. Or she texts me like, oh, you left this behind. It's like, I'd much rather like do everything right the first time to like accelerate accelerate the process, but just like go through the breakup quicker mm-hmm. than have it linger and always have like the knife in my heart kind of thing, you know? Yeah. So it's not that I, I'm not trying to be toxic about it. It's just like I've been through breakups to understand that there's, there's certain speeds that someone could like move on from and that... The more that you try to like stick around, the harder and longer it's gonna take for you to move on. You Mm -hmm. know, so I so some people might see it as my way as being toxic, but I just rather get, you know, onto the other side of things and like start my healing journey, so I could just get back into the game at some point and just be ready to date when the time comes. And for the people that are watching our podcast and going maybe through a breakup right now, Mm -hmm. what would you suggest to them? On how, if they don't know how to handle handle it, yeah, what would you suggest to them, and why should they take your suggestion? I've always said the same thing. I've always said that you know when you go through a breakup is to try to remember who you were or what you were doing before you got into a relationship. You know, like if there were certain dreams that you gave up on, if there were certain hobbies that you used to do, if there was a sport that you were doing or a craft that you were trying to master, try to like tap into who you were before you got into a relationship. And then try to just kind of refine yourself by doing the things you used to love, mm-hmm. right? So if your like goal and aspiration was to become a cook and you dropped cooking, well, like get back into that and put yourself 
in a familiar community of other people who also like to cook because when you then are ready to date, you're already going to be in a circle of people that already have some common aspects that you do and some mm -hmm. common interests, right? So basically, it's to do that so that you use your breakup and create something uh, special Better. from it. You yeah. Know? yeah. Just so, got to change your mind. Yeah. So like going, yeah. like you could yeah. use for some people, like it's to go to the gym. It's a release. For some people, it's to get creative. It's to draw. So some people like will draw out their emotions, right? So basically through the breakup, you just utilize it to become a better version of yourself essentially mm -hmm. you know also like a good a good point you mentioned like is to occupy yourself basically with something get busy else. get busy, get busy right? and do something because if you really think about it like a good 50 to 60 percent of us like are fucking overthinkers and if you're even not an overthinker maybe after your breakup you'll be an overthinker when you spend too much time like on your fucking when you're alone right so if you start doing like what you just said and occupy yourself with something that you love also yeah well you're not going to think about your breakup like that and you might heal yourself like a little bit uh, faster don't get me wrong it still hurts it's still gonna hurt it's normal yeah. but it's, it's just to not stay alone in this process and to be in your room and cry or whatever it's not gonna help you Maybe you'll do it, but make sure that you stay occupied and you do something you love, like you mentioned. So, but yeah. I think it's good to do it. I think it's good to just cry and just feel your emotions mm -hmm. at, the, at first, 100%, even for a week if you have to. Mm -hmm. But like, just don't get stuck in it in that crazy loop, you know? Like, something that helps a lot would be also traveling. I see a lot of people that just, you know, uh, go out, do activities and stuff like that. But to be honest, traveling and just going out of, like, your city, your... Uh, your country, if anything, it's new just era, great. Yeah. You just see people, see new people, eat new f food, new activities. Everything is just new. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that that's that's a must in my opinion too. So yeah. it's a breath of uh, breath of fresh air. That's mm -hmm. what you say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just yeah. traveling. Will you see beaches. You see bitches. But but for some people though, the traveling aspect can be seen, can be toxic because sometimes people mm -hmm. will use like traveling as like a form of like escapism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So true, like they'll, they'll they'll leave the thinking leave that problems. they're moving on. Yeah. But like the minute you come back, your problems are there waiting for you. Mm, you true. know. It's so like you live like this fake life for like a week or two, and then you come back, and then you then you have to process your emotions, like you were saying that you have to do. You know? But true. then it would be. Well, we all said it. I think all the answers are here. The same way you said, like, for maybe a week or two weeks, you cry your emotion out, then you're, you're like, part of the problem now. Like, you're thinking about everything that's going on with you. And then you you start healing then after you travel, you yeah, know? Because yeah. you already kind of process, like, the problems. It's like the moving or, on. Like, the, let me just breathe that ass exactly so that i think that would be like very like a great idea to feel your emotions that whatever you need occupy yourself and then after maybe everyone is different for some people they can move on after a month for some people it takes a year whatever your time frame is maybe let's say six months and for four months you're you're doing you you're occupying your city whatever and then after the last two months you're traveling yeah that would be a complete process that for healing but it's different for everyone this is i think this is just our advice for people out there yeah, yeah i've always i've always had like a i've always had a five-step breakup system right the first one is assessing your emotions so don't neglect neglect them don't oppress them you know feel, feel them it. right um the the second thing after that was to uh you know get back out there mm -hmm. so to like to like we mentioned right getting back into doing things that you used to love or trying different things the third thing was reconnecting with friends and family members because oftentimes when we get into a relationship, we tend to either forget or not be hanging right. around as much with our friends and family members. Mm -hmm. So reconnect with them and they will also help you through your breakup process. Uh, number four, I always say to say yes to more things. So when your friends are asking you to come hang out, even if you don't want to because you're feeling sad, you're feeling depressed, don't. just say yes. Mm. Just go out. Trust me, you're going to feel a lot better having done that. Mm. Uh, and number five is just to be gentle with yourself. A lot of people after a breakup will be hard on themselves, right? A lot of people are going to blame themselves for the breakup. But oftentimes, remember, it always takes two people to tango. And that oftentimes, it was, if, if it was meant to be, it was meant to be. And the fact that you guys broke up, it's better for the both of y'all. Better and you might also find someone else. Mm -hmm. You, someone you else? always, you always, you always will. will. You mm -hmm. always find better someone yeah. else. And that actually leads me up to, to my, next, my next question. Um, well, first off, do you, do you guys think that you guys have experienced like like true love or do you guys feel that there is still a level of love for you guys to experience that's out there can i have a question on top of that do you well uh, just for you to answer 
does first love count? Because first love and real love for me is different. First love is the first time you experience love and you think that you've been so much in love your whole life. Mm-hmm. And then you with you get you grow older or whatever and you have that that love. So for me it is different because my first first girlfriend, which is also the person I lost my virginity, where um I always thought that is the girl that I've loved the most, the most ever. For years, 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 whatever. I've never thought that I could love someone more. Mm-hmm. Until it actually happened. And I was like, that was actually just first love. And it's just, I've never, I thought that was love. But it's just me experiencing what right. is love. And then after I, I, I got with someone and then starting what's showing and seeing what's, why you, why you. Because, and I'm, I'm going to highlight what you're saying. Oh, and, it, and, and it's like experiencing love at his. Full potential. Full potential, I'll, yeah. I'll say. But. I do believe that there's no, um, you can always meet someone that you'll love as much as someone else, but you'll never think that because we don't, that's not something you do when you're in love with someone, you're in love with that person in the present moment and you imagine your life with that person, that person, right? You don't, you're not like thinking, oh my God, is there someone else out there that I will love as much? Right. I don't think so. Yeah. You don't think so? You don't think so? I don't think so. You I think, think that I think, some people think like that. Yeah, I think I think because um, I was talking to one of my friends once, and he was talking about like um, he's a, he's a pretty boy. He has a, his shit, his his shit together. He has a lot of girls after him, whatever. Mm-hmm. And basically, it's like he already had his first love, mm-hmm. but now it's harder because of how many options he could get. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I was like, basically, mean. let's say he talks to that one girl. Everything's fine. Everything's great. Everything he's like catching feelings, or whatever, and she's catching feelings too. Mm-hmm. But then again, he's never sure. Because he doesn't know, like, oh, maybe it's great with her, yes, but it could be greater with someone else because I could get also someone else. Mm-hmm. That could be, let's say, prettier or this better or this better, whatever. So it's just like there's so many options because of, let's say, internet and stuff like that, mm-hmm. that it's hard to just settle with one person, mm-hmm. you know? But I, I get I get what you mean. I think, I think for me, my, my opinion, I think it's two different things because um, this is the problem with nowadays. You know, yeah. in 2023, yeah, as you yeah. said, that's like, a now problem. So, this is now problem, like, like as as love. But you want to. This is the thing. It's hard to explain, but it's the thing is is when you had like maybe multiple partners in your life, yeah. and then you're used to try and go and try and go and try and go. And as you mentioned, he, like he's a pretty boy, he can get what whoever he wants. Mm-hmm. He probably I don't know. I don't want to judge him, and I don't know his life. But let's say let's assume that he tried a lot with many people yeah. he gets used to that but the problem with that is he doesn't wait to settle down with that one person at that moment so i'll give you an example let's say he starts catching food with this girl whatever yeah. and then the first like three or four months it's he doesn't know how it's just more like uh, it's new <laughs> the real love most of the time comes after you know when when you have your worst moment and your bad moments it's unexpected. or whatever or, or like things that is not like just all uh, rainbows and sunshines. And that person is still there next to you, stick by you. While that for me, like, I'll be loved. Like that person is, mm-hmm. is there for you at every single moment. But maybe for him, he doesn't necessarily wait until that time to see if that person do that for you. Which because of the fact that he sees a lot of potential in a lot of girls. Yeah, exactly. Let's but say. then he'll or or let's say, um, well, how do you call it? It's like the the uh like three months, it's like honeymoon phase. Yeah, honeymoon phase, exactly. So let's say he's with a girl for like four months and he's like honeymoon phase, right? But then when it goes down, maybe it's, you should ask him, whatever, when it goes down the honeymoon phase, does he, is that at that moment he start looking for other girls? Because okay. he's seeking this like, this like feeling of like honeymoon with everyone. You get what you do. You get what I mean. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's a hard topic. As as much you you're actually so right. Like in 2023, this is our problem. It's a now problem. Yeah. 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 It wasn't like that b- before. Because b- before it was just like whatever I had in my town is mm-hmm. what I'm getting. You know what I'm saying? The baddest girl at school is the baddest girl I know that I'm gonna know for the rest of my life. You know, I'm never gonna see that uh, model from uh, Italy. To, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because next thing you know, oh, I I could technically go to Italy, see this girl, mm-hmm. and maybe find a fun love with her. Which is actually crazy. Yeah. Like that, that, I that, would have never seen this girl if it wasn't for Instagram, Instagram or TikTok or anything like that. See, I fall in love on TikTok like 20 times a day. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, fuck. It's hard. It's yeah. hard. It's hard. 
so check this out. So bear with me. So this is the you guys have heard about this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it to the folks. But it's the the three loved the three loves. I love that theory. Right? Have you seen that? Yeah, you you'll know what it is. So basically, it, it goes on to say that we uh, meet three loves in our lifetime, right? The the first love. This love feels like a fairy tale. It's the all-consuming puppy love and one that at all times you think will last forever. Often we experience our first love in high school and it usually ends because of the two people either grow apart or because of some trivial argument that the relationship simply isn't strong enough to withstand. So it says that this love is usually more surface leveled with more importance placed on how the relationship might look to others while it certainly feels like true love at the time but it is not usually that deep, raw, raw. Um, Oh, sorry, that is, so So while it certainly feels like true love at the time, it's not usually the deep, raw love that you'll experience later on. The heartbreak can feel immense initially, but you usually recover from it quickly. So that's your first love. And then you have the intense love, which is your second love. This is the second love, and it is usually the one that turns your world upside down. As we fall into this intense love story, the relationship becomes a mirror into our soul. We see all the all of our, we see all of our insecurities, our needs, and our desires staring back at us. In this relationship, we may experience jealousy, fear, and self doubt and self doubt that we've never felt before. This relationship becomes uh, massively high in drama and massively low in lows. We often try to mold the other half into our perfect partner, and we try to mold ourselves to become theirs. This is the love that feels like a roller coaster and the one that can leave us feeling hurt like never before. And then you have your third love, the unconditional love. After we've recovered from the heartbreak of the intense love and we've begun to heal and cultivate self-love, then it becomes the unexpected love. The one that comes from nowhere and feels just completely and utterly right. There are no games and where you are, when you are with them, you are simply to feel like you are at home. You embrace all that they are, and all their imperfections and all their nuances. You feel more like yourself with them than you've ever felt before. And you constantly inspire each other to be the best version of yourselves. When you face an obstacle or a challenge in the relationship, you work on it together to overcome it because you are both committed in the future of your relationship. This is the unconditional love that marks the beginning of a forever story. And you can thank the universe every day for bringing them into your world. Mm, that's facts. Totally agree with it. So... I believe in this, but I, I I believe it happens in a specific moment in someone's time. What I mean by that is like you could have had like 10 relationships before, but I feel like the minute that you experience like one type of those loves, it happens like one after the next. Mm. I feel like the unconditional love comes right after the intense love. I only think that there's a little bit of a gap between like your puppy love, like your first love yeah, and the intense love. You yeah. Know? Yeah, but they do happen in that order. I don't think you have an intense love before a puppy love, and I don't think you have an unconditional love before an intense love. You mm. know, I believe it happens in that order, and I think that the only ones that happen back to back from each other is when you come out of your intense love, which tends to be sometimes a more like toxic one. Yeah, then you fall into like, your unconditional one because it 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 fucked you up to the point where you thought you were never gonna date again. Yeah, and then here this person comes along out of nowhere. Wow. And completely like threw your whole uh, life schedule apart, you know. It's crazy. Your your heart is like black, and then there's this person comes in like chisel until it comes red again, and you're like, "Yo, get out!" And then that's that's. Uh, can I say that? Well, maybe you'll cut it. I was about to say that's a little bit in your situation. It's exactly my situation. But yeah, okay. I just, if you say it, it's <laughs> yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. No, no, but it is though. I mean, I think it's safe to say. And I mean, look, I'm not saying that, you know, because I quote unquote on my unconditional love now that this is the one, right? We still never know what we the out know. final outcome is going to be, right? But it just like the timing of things just seems so. But let me, let me see my, my perspective. Yeah. Because your perspective might be different because it's you from, I've known you since the before. The, the pendant, the wow, well, how do you say during, it? During. The, yeah. the during and then now, right? Um, and before it was intense love, 100% toxic love, whatever you want to call it. You had a great relationship at some point, whatever it became toxic, it was intense, right? And then you really went in that, like, I you, you were there too, in that, like, 
area of like I'm not dating. I'm not. There's yeah. no girl. No nope. girl. I'm never gonna never gonna happen. Fuck. It's gonna be in a while. And I'm gonna do me. Yeah, I'm doing me. I'm I'm doing me for years. No, until I'm millionaire. I'm not even talking to our girl. Celibacy, bro. Like mm. this guy was like in his like bubble. Th- like a, a limit, bro. We we're going out. A girl was like, and he was like. Fully single man for months, and he was like, "Yo," and the girl was bad, and he was like, "Yo, don't touch me," but didn't say that obviously. But he was just like in his vibe. Um, but yeah, bro. And then there's this like little rat, this little little girl that comes in out of nowhere, and out then of the sewers, out of the sewers for real. That's a rat. Rat. <laughs> Are you a loser? And you're like, yeah, I am. You want me? <laughs> <laughs> you want to come over? <laughs> and then we'll see if it's unconditional love because we never know. Time will tell. But and the thing that's interesting, too, is that, like, we, like, it was the same thing for her, too. Like, she wasn't looking for anything either. We were both, like, we weren't even, like, in each other's thoughts. Mm. Like, we had met, right, and then reconnected later on. But between that time, like, we weren't thinking of one another at all. Like, we were each doing our, ourselves in our own lives, you know? And she had the whole thing, too. She was also someone who doesn't need to be in a relationship that could take care of herself. and Independent. Yeah, she's yeah. independent as and fuck. As, as fuck, you know? And she has her friends. She has her family. She has a great support system. And so did I, right? Mm. And and that's why, like, we both said, like, if it wasn't for you, like, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have settled down for mm. anything else because we've gone through all these intense loves Emotions. that we know what we want and we genuinely connected on an unconditional level. Mm. There wasn't anything that I was seeking from someone and nor was she. It was just more so I met this person, she is who she is, and I'm drawn to that mm. unconditionally. And so is she. And so, and so was she, right? And now, like, it, it developed into what it developed. And I think that's why, like, I mean, like, and like our arguments are not even to do with anything about the relationship. Mm, I know. We don't even argue about like, it's it's never about like, oh, you did this and you did that and you spoke to this person. You're still talking to your ex. Like none of that. Mm. The only thing we have to argue about is like political debates. You like yellow? What the fuck? Type yeah. shit? You know, like or you, you, peel, you peel like the banana from the wrong end. And then you guys argue on that. And then, like, we'll go through this whole thing, but then, like, we'll end up talking about, like, if zombies have feelings. You get me? <laughs> like, that's the only time that we get into... <laughs> Bro, you know what? I can actually imagine it. Like, she's like, zombie do have feelings. And he's like, what the fuck? No. And he and she's like, are you insecure? <laughs> like, are you okay? They do have feelings. What is your problem, Sergio? If you don't want to be a zombie, just say that. I don't want to be a zombie. I don't. I told you I don't want to be a zombie. And then well, they- you're just lame. Okay, bye. Would you like me if I was a zombie? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's actually fun to, to watch them do their little thing, little arguments over fucking nothing, bro. Do over you, nothing. do you, like, now that you guys experience, like, both sides of things, do you guys prefer? I want to say prefer, but yeah, I guess they prefer. Would you guys prefer to be single or to be in a relationship? I would prefer to be single at the moment. Really? Yeah. Me as as I am whatever so, comes comes. Yeah, like I'm someone that also like uh, I don't know if it has anything to do with that, but I'm someone that believes in fate. At the moment you're supposed to be single, you're supposed to be a single. And the moment you're supposed to be in a relationship, you're supposed to be in a relationship. Yeah. It'll I, just come. Yeah, I'll just I just think like that. I'm not I'm not someone that's like like uh like you couldn't pr- portray me as someone that would like oh my god I'm dependent of being in a relationship. You guys know how like my boys are important for me. So like girl no girl. I don't I don't right. care if if there's one and I'm super happy. I'll be happy to be in that position at the moment. But if I'm single, then I'm single. It is what it is, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's cancel it. I've been canceling. No, I've been <laughs> saying. I'm always like, oh I am good at it though now. Talk about what? oh take what take me on a date, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm not dating at the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not looking for good. anything. I'm just doing me. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? But you've changed a lot, bro. Like like I, like if I say from my perspective, from like as soon as you came out to show and like obviously both of us, we got so much attention like from social media and everything. Mm-hmm. And then obviously things happen or whatever. And then you got like a lot of like girls attention. At first it was like harder for you like to say no, let's say. You're like, I couldn't. bro, can I, we'll cut it if you don't want to say it, but I'll say it. Like that guy one time 
as soon as like he got single, like as soon, like maybe a month after whatever, in the same week, you're gonna cut that, but I'm just gonna say it regardless. In the same week, like you had like six dates and he had to just cancel. I had six days and I can't. I was can- canceling everything. I just yeah. couldn't say no on the spot. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which is, oh, I then remember I, he was calling us and he was like, what do I say? What do I say? What the fuck am I doing? It was always like, oh, when are you free? And I was like, in my head, I was like, never. Oh, yeah, and then yeah. I was like, oh, Friday. And then Friday comes, I'm like, fuck. But, but yeah. But the right girl will come around and. Yeah, yeah. When she but comes out. But he's not going to say no. It's going to be just like. Unconditional. It's just gonna happen. Gonna, yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll, and you guys probably, she's not even gonna ask you out. Probably, you guys are just gonna talk, ha ha ha, gee gee gee, gla And then at some point, you'll, she'll just be like, oh, meet me at this spot, which is probably has nothing to do with a date. You'll just see her, right? And you'll be like, I'm I think, I think her. I won't. I, I'll see her again by accident. Yeah, like, yeah, you know something like that. This is. I see her, I mean. like, let's say I go to Cacart. Anyways, <laughs> I see her, and then I'm like, oh damn, she's cute. And then, okay, and then I see her again somewhere. I'm like, shit, mm. something like that. I, we'll I see. Don't. Love is interesting, it. man. Love is is definitely something that it, it, it it's definitely something that makes me feel like this is like all one big game. Like no other being, like on this earth, gets to experience love the way that we do. Mm. Do you, you, know, you, do you uh, know, know what I'm saying? What do you mean? I'm saying the way that we do. No, what do you uh. mean? Explain, because I I do get, but I don't get it. That's <clears> like I'm well, saying, like like an, like like let's say dogs loving each other is is not the same love that we have for another human being. You know, like dogs will have like unconditional love towards their their like humans, mm. yeah, their master, yeah. right? But it's not the same kind of love that we have between dogs. What? No, between humans. Oh, like us between <laughs> humans. It there, there's there, there's no such thing. Like it says unconditional, but there is no such thing as unconditional love amongst mm. amongst. There is no such thing. Yes, I'm with your child. What? Your child. What do you mean? Like with your you kid? Have, no, I'm kid. saying in relationships. Oh. Mm-hmm. You can have unconditional dog, uh, love towards your dog. I'm saying in relation, you 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 always end up like being in love with your partner under the the condition that of what they can provide to you. Because otherwise, why would you be in love in the first place? You, you're, not get, gonna, you're not going to be in love just hard, because I, the person is is the opposite sex of you and they the, the can provide sex. Oh, okay, but yeah. just just define for people out there define like provide because for for most people provide is like provide money money no it's yeah. not it's, yeah, it's, but it's you to, like you what would you like in someone yeah provide but, has to be like qualities uh, like comfort like it's, it's just what you like in someone yeah, like, yeah, yeah it's not basically it's not the word provide it's just like what you like in someone Fun. no but, but but it is provide like a, a, a woman would will, will provide uh the sense of security in terms of like her being like nurturing and empathetic that is what she's providing to the relationship mm. a man would provide other aspects into the relationship even though that they're not financially so like you don't fall in love with someone unconditionally. There has to be something that draws you yeah. to them, right? Yeah. So you're falling in love with them under the condition that they are providing these certain criteria to you. Because a kid, you you don't you don't know their qualities. You don't know what he doesn't provide any anything to you. But it's your child, so you it's unconditional. Yeah, unconditional. but it's also it's also not the same love, right? Yeah, exactly. Like you have like no choice. Like well, I mean, you do have a choice, but by default, you love them. The kid. Right, because they're 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 the purest form of innocence, right? Mm. But in order to fall in love with someone, you will only fall in love with them under the condition that they provide a certain value to you. Mm -hmm. So no love is unconditional. Mm. It's always under the condition that they could provide something to you in whatever shape or form that you see fit, right? Um, But that's what I mean when I say like no one gets experienced love the way the way that we do. I like no one. No, no other thing has to go through heartbreaks the way that we do. Mm. There's nothing that has to go through a heartbreak and come out of it stronger. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like we're the only ones that have to go through the experience. And if anything, I would argue that that is also one's purpose in life is to experience breakups, breakups and love. Mm, as, sure. as, as a, I think that is, I think that's what's the most r- real on this on this on, in this world. A hundred percent. It builds you. It builds your character. It builds you. You learn from that. You just grow from uh, breakups. Let's say, like you were talking about, right? Because yeah. what's really real, anyways, love is not something that you could actually Tell grab that. and quantify. It's something that you, that you feel within yourself. And if it's not something that you could actually see, then it, it might probably be the realest thing that there is. I think mm-hmm. there is because if if you Pascal, if you take out love and humanity there's no humanity period mm. i i i believe so because we do a lot of things out of love yes but also just like making love just uh, 
having sex, whatever, like being in love with someone, creating families. This is all love. This uh, is all love related. You could have sex and not love. Oh, yeah, no, no, for sure. Uh, I, I'm saying more in the general aspect of like the time of humanity. Mm. Like the, the main point was just to recreate and also being with another partner and have the woman being drawn to the man and being in love by what they provides or whatever it is. So, yes, I do, I do believe, and that's maybe a hard take, but I think that if love wasn't there, if love wasn't a thing, I don't think we, we just human would not be there. Same thing for fear. Same thing for like most of like joy, your, joy, fear. There's we just wouldn't Emotions be us. Itself. We would be a bunch of NPCs, fam. I mean, we 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 would we we would still be us because like naturally and instinctively, our bodies are made to want to reproduce, right? Yeah. Like naturally, I'll be drawn to a female because I I'm programmed to spread my seed and to make kids, mm-hmm. right? And that's why I think <laughs> that I would argue that. To fall in love, to be in love, to experience love is probably even more of our goal of life than it is to just reproduce. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, no. But you mean love relationship, not necessarily... Yeah, like love, 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 love oh, okay, relationship. Okay, okay. Yeah, I get it. Because you know? I was about to say that if, let's say, we take love out of the picture and you're programmed to reproduce, you'll have a child. And then you're going to love this child. But if you don't have love... Well, we you're never gonna protect a child because well, you don't care. Well, that's the thing, and that's why I'm saying like to to lo- and that's why I'm saying that to love someone is like one of the most important loves because like ba- like back in the day, like way way back in the day, like just like primitively, like you were meant to have kids. Mm-hmm. You would teach them away the way of life, and then they would go fuck off on their own. Mm-hmm. You still see that amongst animals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The the mothers are there, and t- the first of all, the the, the, the males are not there. Mm-hmm. They're, they're just there spreading their seed. The moms will stay with their cubs, but the minute that their cubs are of Can't age, they, they they go about their day. They, they teach them how to, to hunt properly. They, they, they actually teach them the tactics, right? And then once they're old enough, they're, they're off to be a part of the pack or mm-hmm. their own pack or go by themselves. So that's what I'm saying that like, yeah, even though like it's embedded in our DNA to reproduce, what's not embedded in our DNA is to fall in love. Mm, that's right. And that's why I'm saying that I think, think that to be in love and to experience love, even if it's for your child, is one of the most realest things that there is to the world. So that comes up to another question with what you just said. Why do, do we want to experience love? Why do we naturally just do it? I think, like you say, it's natural. I don't yeah, think but it's... No, but... We, do we look for it? But I think, because you said, like, animals, right? Yeah. Animals, they'll just reproduce and yeah, go on just, with their day and blah, yeah, blah, blah, move on. Why do we, as... Uh, what's up, mammifer? As mammals mammals we we do things differently and we want to experience love i don't know i guess because love is such a great feeling but I, I, mm. it's what, hard right what like, what what what, what, is, what is love is the question oh but this is the answer that we can't because love is a definition your it's definition different is different for, for me for me and you it's how we experience love well it, i mean it is it is definitely something chemical you know it's definitely something that's that that we can we could actually look from a biological standpoint that it has an impact on us, you know. So our body and our mind reacts to certain situations that we that we're put in that release in certain types of chemicals, you know, by default, right? Mm-hmm. When a girl touches you, or when you guys kiss, you release dopamine. When you have sex and you orgasm, you release oxytocin, right? So it's like it's like all of these things, like all these hormones and chemicals that get released in circumstances when you're with someone of the opposite sex that m- encompasses love. It's not It's not like a, a one-answered sentence, right? It's like all these chemicals and all these reactions, all these feelings that you have encompasses love. You know, it's as complicated as the human, you know, body, right? Mm. It's, it's composed of a bunch of different layers and nuances and gray areas that, you know, defines the word love. Love is great. Love is amazing. It is. But I was, uh, I was about to say, but that that's a hard topic. Because cause what if you, the only thing you've known is a certain way of getting love and you think that is the definition of love? Because there's also, yes, like you say, it's chemicals, right? Like oxytocin, dopamine, whatever. But, and that's that's very, maybe a hard topic for for uh, view, viewer's advice, right? Uh, girls that got raped in their lives. Mm-hmm. They got raped by their dad on, since they're so young. And the only thing they experience is 
they think that their dad is giving them love because that's what he makes them believe probably for the raping Since you're stuff. young, it's easy to to play with your brain. To associate yeah. love to, yeah. to that. And then you think that, that... It's normal. That's normal. That's like... Because that's the only thing you've known. And then as someone asks you what's love and you're like, well, making love to my dad, which is not love until you experience a different type of love. That's why I say like also like all our definitions are different. Different. Because yeah. you can... Your definition of love can be what it is as of now. But let's say in 10, 20 years or something happens in your life, that completely changes your view of love. A hundred percent. Or maybe like... And it can go in both ways. Some people that were supposed to be there for you are not there. And you thought that was love in the same way that people that you didn't think they were going to be there, they're there. And you're like, well, actually, wow, that's love. I never knew that you were giving me love that way. So it's... Fuck, we're just actually, if I think about it, we're actually going in a circle because it's actually something that you can't answer. Can't it really explain. And it's so different for Well, everyone. I think there's a question. lot of like like a lot of things in life that you just can't explain, that you just have to experience. It's a question of a perspective. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Which we will actually, you know what? Fuck it. We'll just do a part two. Yeah. But on Patreon. <laughs> so if you guys want to see us complete this topic you guys could immediately hop on to patreon and finish the part two of the segment because i think we're just going to keep going at it because i think there's still some things that we could cover uh, a lot of things that we could cover so i mean on that note sorry to cut it so short but it's been your boy sergio's talks it's your boy, Matt. It's your boy carl don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll see you guys over at patreon see y'all Esa loca por quitarse la ropa, baja hasta abajo la...